In our last video, we explored the perfectly symmetrical cubic system where all axes are equal and all angles are 90 degrees. It's the system of perfect balance. But nature loves variety. What happens if we start with that perfect cube but stretch it or squeeze it along just one axis? We break some of that perfect symmetry and in doing so, we create a whole new crystal family, the tetragonal system. Welcome to part 2 of our series where we explore some of the incredibly important gemstones and industrial minerals. Like the cubic system, the tetragonal system is built on a framework of three crystallographic axes that are all mutually perpendicular, which means they all meet at 90 degree angles. But here is the crucial difference. While the two horizontal axes, which we call A1 and A2, are still equal to each other, the vertical C axis now has a different length. It can be either longer or shorter than the horizontal axis. So the basic rule is A1 equal to A2 but not equal to C and this minor adjustment greatly impacts the outcome. If you were to slice a tetragonal crystal horizontally, the cross section would be a perfect square. But if you slice it vertically, it would be a rectangle. This gives these crystals their characteristic squarish prismatic look. By stretching that one axis, we've lost some of the perfect symmetry of the cubic system. We are now down to five planes of symmetry and five axes of symmetry in the normal class. But the single most important defining feature of the tetragonal system is this. It has one and only one fourfold axis of rotation. This axis of fourfold symmetry is always the unique vertical C axis. This means that if you hold a tetragonal crystal and spin it around that vertical axis, it will look identical four times in one complete 360 degree turn. So we can say that a crystal is tetragonal if it has one and only one of these special four-way spin axes. If it had more than one, it would be a cubic crystal. If it had none, it would be a different type of crystal. This single feature is the ultimate test. The shapes or forms we see in the tetragonal system are often what we call open forms. This means they can't enclose space all by themselves and need to combine with other forms to make a complete crystal. It's like building with a very specific set of Legos. In the tetragonal crystal system, many shapes start out like this. This is a prism. Think of it as the four walls of a box but with no top and no bottom. You can see right through it. Because it can't enclose space by itself, it's called an open form. To complete our crystal, we need another piece. This one, called a pinacoid, acts as the lid and the base. But just like the prism, it's also an open form on its own. It's just two flat planes. So how do we get a finished crystal? Simple, they have to combine. The prism provides the sides and the pinacoid seals the top and bottom. Together, these two open forms create one perfectly closed crystal. It's this teamwork between different shapes that gives us many of the beautiful crystals we see in nature. The poster child for the tetragonal system is the beautiful mineral zircon. Gem quality zircon is a brilliant gemstone, but its true superpower is its durability. Zircon crystals can contain trace amounts of uranium and by measuring its radioactive decay, Geologists can use zircon crystals to date the oldest rocks on Earth, giving us a window into our planet's ancient past. Another key tetragonal mineral is rutile. You might not have heard of it, but you see it every day. When ground into a fine powder, rutile becomes a brilliant non-toxic white pigment. It's what makes paint, paper, plastics and even some foods look bright white. And perhaps one of the most historically significant tetragonal minerals is cassiterite. For thousands of years, cassiterite has been the primary ore of tin. From the weapons and tools of the Bronze Age to the tin cans and electronic solder of the modern world, this tetragonal mineral has been essential to human civilization. So what's the big takeaway here? We are seeing a fundamental principle of crystallography in action. A small change in the internal blueprint, just stretching one axis, dramatically changes the final shape the crystal tends to grow into, a shape we call its habit. In the cubic system, where all axes are equal, crystals tend to grow equally in all directions, forming blocky shapes like cubes. But in the tetragonal system, that unique C axis creates a preferred direction of growth. The crystal finds it easier to add new atoms along this special direction, which is why tetragonal minerals like zircon and rutile so often form long prismatic crystals. A mineral's outward appearance is a direct clue to its secret internal symmetry. We've seen what happens with three axes, both equal and unequal. But what if a crystal system decided it needed four axes to build its structure? Things get a little more complex and a lot more hexagonal. In the next video, we'll explore the beautiful six-sided world of the hexagonal system.